Welcome to the Weather Insights Podcast. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. Jeff, we recorded our last podcast on Monday, and this is Wednesday, just two days later. Boy, how things change very quickly. Yeah, that's what happens this time of year. A little, a little early in June for a lot of stuff, but uh, this is why we always tell people you got to kind of pay attention daily this time of year with the tropics, and this is a, a good example of of how things have changed uh, in the last couple of days with uh, a couple of areas of interest here we're gonna we're gonna take a look at. We have the infrared satellite uh, for the Gulf of Mexico. Um, National Hurricane Center, of course, updating their their forecast, looking at Invest 90L, which is expected to move over Florida and stay out in the Atlantic. Uh, yeah, that area right there. Uh, it'll stay out in the Atlantic. It's being blocked by a frontal system. But uh, we now have a flare up in the southwestern Gulf that they are watching. Yeah, and again, this is the same trough axis we've been talking about, um, you know, for the last several days. And you can kind of see it here elongating out um, from northeast to southwest. And it's going to be more importantly back here in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico uh, as we get into late this weekend and early next week, where we could potentially see some some lower pressures develop. And, you know, the other thing to look at is, is the Atlantic Basin as a whole. And we can go in a little bit more detail here what we're seeing throughout the basin. As you alluded to, tropical cyclone formation is rare in June, but it does happen. Of course, the big one, even though it was many years ago, was Tropical Allison for, for Houston, formed as early as uh, June 5th. And uh, that, um, you know, even though it was a tropical storm, it did a lot of damage and, and cost a lot of lives, unfortunately. Yeah, so getting tropical systems to form, you know, typically this time of year, we're, we're looking here in the Gulf of Mexico. We have a graphic here coming up showing that. But I did want to show this this kind of wave out here off the coast of Africa. It's it's, it's a little too soon to see development in this in this location. But boy, this is a healthy looking wave uh, for June. So, you know, this is kind of what we're looking at this season. A lot of active uh, tropical waves moving from Africa westward. And like I mentioned, you know, this is formation for June 11th through the 20th, so kind of the period we're in. And pretty common here, if you're going to get development, it's going to be likely in the Gulf of Mexico, the Western Caribbean, exactly kind of where we're looking for development right now. Would be extremely rare to see anything out here in the deep tropical Atlantic or the Eastern Caribbean. And so just this just kind of gives you some idea of, of where we typically have formation this time of year. Yeah, and it's interesting to notice all of the formation down in the um, eastern Pacific. Of course, that doesn't affect us as much, but they do cross over sometimes. But the eastern Pacific is cooling off right now, so we're not really seeing that kind of activity right now uh, for that area. Yeah, it's been it's been quiet. There is a, an area of interest down here on the, the southern coast of Mexico currently, yeah. but... You know, it it appears in this particular setup, the it is going to favor the Atlantic side, the Southern Gulf, Bay of Campeche, uh, into early next week, and and we can go into some of the models and kind of kind of look. You know, we've been we've been talking about this uh, for a few days now, so all of this is going to be all these models are for Tuesday morning around sunrise, so next Tuesday, June the eighteenth, around sunrise. Uh, this is the European, and, and we we kind of finally now have a, a more defined uh, area of low pressure here in the Bay of Campeche, southern Gulf of Mexico, and the European. Um, this is more consolidated than, than what we've been looking at the last couple of days. Uh, same thing on the GFS, maybe a little bit more broad, and hints here of a trough kind of coming north from this low up towards the southwest Louisiana coast. And that's kind of going to be the idea here. We're going to have this, this trough of low pressure and then potentially down here in the southwestern Gulf, uh, some indications of, of a tropical system forming. And you can see the, the European uh, and the GFS kind of in the same location at the same time, looking at the Canadian a little bit slower. So it still has the low pressure. Uh, Tuesday morning, but it's just off the western coast of the Yucatan, and so the, the other two models are kind of over here in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico, and so that's that's kind of what you know we're we're starting to see the signal now. Uh, we're not talking very far out; we're talking within seven days. We have this on the deterministic model, some signal down in this area. 
Um, we also are seeing the signal on the the ensembles, and this is you know again the ensembles are something we look at to how much confidence or credit do we give those deterministic runs, and you can see the ensembles here really pegging this area down here in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico, the Bay of Campeche, the same locations the deterministic runs are showing development. And so this is starting to raise our confidence. Really no surprise that the National Hurricane Center started to highlight this area this morning uh, with a low 20% chance of development over the next seven days. I think that's probably going to go up, especially if we continue to see consistency here with the models. The other thing to point out, and this is the GFS, is this kind of, like we talked about, low pressure down here, possibly again, next early next week but you can see this moisture surge and trough axis approaching the texas coast from the southeast and so if we go back in time you can see it uh kind of approach from the central gulf this is uh, late sunday going into monday and you can see it kind of surging up toward the texas coast and really kind of gets in here late tuesday this is tuesday evening uh, finally starts to get into the texas coast but notice again a very sharp contrast a very sharp cutoff between this tropical air mass lots of showers and thunderstorms likely and a much drier continental air mass over over a large portion of the state of texas and so um it'll be interesting to see how this unfolds into next week how much moisture we get into the state um, really looking at the coastal sections, potentially showing uh, a lot more potential for heavy rainfall. And what's interesting, if you switch over to the European, uh, it is significantly drier. And this probably is more of a function of a more consolidated low pressure system down further to the south in the Bay of Campeche, um, much drier over the state of Texas. So this would focus more of the heavy rain, say, coastal bend southward into deep south Texas. Um, which is very common. You get you get a more defined surface low and it kind of consolidates around that surface low and it's not as spread out um, as to what the GFS is showing here. So we'll see. We'll see how this is still some of that uncertainty as, you know, what kind of impacts are we looking at here? Yeah, we, we it looks like increasingly likely we're going to get some sort of surface low to develop in the southern Gulf Bay of Campeche. But what does that mean up here on the Texas coast? And, and right now it's just a a threat for increasing rainfall and, and this is what you can see so this is today you can see heavy rain still around florida and then as we go we're going to dry out here into the weekend but as we get into sunday here's sunday you can see that moisture starting to come northward from the gulf of mexico and then into coastal texas coastal louisiana as we get into monday tuesday and this is tuesday wednesday getting into the south texas coast and so looking at over the, the next seven days, a very active and wet Gulf of Mexico, potentially getting into coastal Texas. But again, the, the kind of the emphasis here is there could be a pretty sharp cutoff and gradient of, of the heavy rains. We, we can see quite a bit of rain along the coast, maybe not as much further inland uh, across portions of the state. And so this is kind of where that uncertainty starts to creep in about what potentially we're looking at with respect to impacts and um, potentially more of the heavier rains, especially down in deep South Texas, might come a little bit beyond uh, what we're showing here into that Wednesday timeframe. If surface low forms up and moves into Mexico or deep South Texas, obviously that, that, is, that is the area we'd be watching down here. But, you know, this is, this is a good example of, you know, keep, a, keep an eye on things over the next couple of days, check into the tropics daily, uh, forecast daily for those, you know, potential impacts or chances of rain. And really anything that forms down in the southwestern Gulf, we are not looking at anything significant. Uh, this would really be a rainmaker uh, for northern Mexico, southern Texas, coastal Texas. We're not looking at big wind impacts or storm surge or anything like that. Um, but this is, you know, a typical early season tropical system, relatively weak. And honestly, potentially beneficial for areas down here along the Rio Grande. If we can, if we can get it inland into northeast Mexico or south Texas, uh, this area down here continues to be in horrible drought and very significant hydrologic drought. Um, and so getting some of this rain would be greatly helpful and beneficial down along the Rio Grande and some of those water supply reservoirs where we've been having some issues for a couple of years now. So potentially not all bad news here with this uh, overview kind of expecting some weak low pressure to develop in the southwestern gulf early next week 
increasing chances of rain on the Texas coast. How much, where the heaviest rain is going to fall, still up in the air, uncertainty with that. Um, but potentially some beneficial rains for the Rio Grande Plains as we get into mid next week. And this is exactly what they need, as you pointed out. They've been in a drought situation for the last couple of years. It's a small area, but this is exactly the kind of thing they need, just some nice, gentle tropical downpours to uh, to get their water levels back to where it needs to be. Jeff, thank you very much. Good stuff, as always. would like to remind our viewers to click and subscribe to our Weather Insights YouTube channel so that you, your friends, your family can stay up to date on the latest tropical information and join us on the next Weather Insights podcast.